got uh, two minutes. It's not long, so I'm going to roll. Good. Make it <laughs> roll. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are you guys doing? Very good. How are you all holding up from the event? Last day. Right? Have you seen like a lot of good content? Yeah. So today we're going to talk a lot about lead conversion. I'm sure you guys have been hearing something about that through this whole conference, right? So we're going to go through lead conversion, a very specific piece of it. <laughs> Uh, Dan and I here, we work together every single day. That's why we're both presenting. We only have one mic, completely her fault. But uh, Dan's, just gonna, Dan's just gonna talk a lot louder than I am. So we have one mic, we're gonna try to get through it though. Yes, we have one mic. Yeah, right. <laughs> so why are we doing lead conversion? So myself and Dan work in the same company. We both have a pretty productive lead conversion system. So our lead teams are closing anywhere from like right now, I think Dan, you're doing what, 400 deals a year, right, on your team? Yes. Our lead team is doing about 250 realtor.com. So I want to talk to you guys about how we're doing that and centered specifically around the conversations we're having at time of conversion. So you guys good with that? Yeah. Want to know how we're doing it? Yeah. All right, first thing I want to touch on really is kind of consumer behavior. Who's working with online leads right now? Anybody not? Not? Okay, how about yes. this? Who is primarily sphere of influence? Okay. okay. I'm, if you would call me, I'll be primarily severe sphere of influence. So the reason we ask that question is because I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but right now, anybody have any idea? And I want this class to be kind of interactive. Feel yes. free to talk. Right? We yes. like that. Please do. So, what do you think your guess is on how long an average buyer is in their home search process right now? Three, six months. Six to twelve. Very good. Very good. Because six to twelve months. But here's one that say this. Let me rephrase it. Once they become transactional, once they are actually out looking at homes, the median right now is 10 weeks. 10 weeks. Think about this. The first two weeks on average is spent not talking to an agent. So before they become your client, they're out talking to everybody else. Anybody see what's happening in referral business right now? Do you think it's going up or down? down. Why do you think that is? Because those first two weeks, right, before they become transactional, before they're talking to you, they're talking to everybody else. And technology and conversion techniques are only getting better. So I really want to focus in real quick on consumer behavior. Why is this happening? <coughs> Someone who said that, you know, the buyer search process is 12 months or more now? Okay. Here's what I want to really break down for you. There's three phases of a buyer search cycle. The first phase is when they're aspirational. Who bought a house in the last two years here, themselves? Okay, how long did you look <coughs> online, or how long did you research the process before you actually did it? Do you know exactly what neighborhood you're gonna go into, exactly what kind of house you're gonna buy? No. Most people don't, right? They start out with, and you can write this down, I like this word, they're aspirational. The first phase is being aspirational. They're thinking about buying a home, they're thinking about how great it's gonna be to have the upgrade, the, the bigger rooms, the bigger yard. Aspirational, put in quotes, daydreaming. Daydream, yes. They're fantasizing. They're starting to paint their life wherever it is. Oh, this kitchen would be nice. Oh, this location would be nice. But they're starting to project themselves somewhere else. Now, that could be anywhere from 9 to 18 months out. <laughs> so, imagine this. Six months before they even tell their spouse they're looking for a home, they're online clicking and stuff. You guys all understand this. This is not a strange concept to you. Aspirational, huh? All right. <laughs> okay. Second phase. They're in the research phase. Now they're thinking about process. What do you guys think they're looking at in the research phase? Prices. Areas, prices, cool. payments, school districts. They're narrowing things down. What would it take to make the dream from the aspirational phase actually happen? What would my life really start to look like if I landed wherever it was that I was daydreaming about? So areas get whittled down, dreams become more focused, and now they become goals. And that can happen anywhere from three to nine months out before they actually buy. This is what we're seeing. And finally, they become transactional. Who's been licensed more than 10 years? You guys remember it used to be that somebody would call you and they'd tell you they want to buy a house. And you'd say, awesome. What do you want to buy? Like six months from now. <coughs> the response was always, well, call me in six months. <laughs> now, what is going to happen if you have that same mentality today? Somebody, they're gone. Yeah. But ironically, guess what's happening? Agents still are at that point. They're looking for, this is kind of how we're wired. Who's gonna close next month? Who can I work with right now? Who's transactional? So guys, you gotta get really, really good at it. It's a nurture game. 
That's number one. You've got to get really good at the nurture game. So once they become transactional, that's a whole different buyer. That's a different task they're trying to accomplish. This is all about task accomplishment. When they pick the phone up or click on a button that they want more information, they have a task they want to accomplish. Access or information. That's what they're looking for when they're transactional. Now, we've got three different tiers. Aspirational, research, transactional, right? We're good. The conversations you have with them, you think there might be a difference between each phase what your conversation needs to look at. Would it surprise me or surprise you if I told you that often what happens is agents mix up those messages. Round peg, square hole. Wrong conversation at the wrong point. Is that surprising to you? No. In all honesty, has anybody done it? Of course. Right. So Dan. Yes. He's in the research phase. Oh. He's thinking about the process. <laughs> I pick like him up as a lead. He's researching. He's like, I gotta figure out how to afford this home or what it's gonna cost. I call him. Hey Dan, would you like to go look at this house? Uh, no, I was just looking. Right, because that may be the wrong conversation to have. No. What time would you want to go see it? Can I show you the house? Probably the wrong conversation to have at that time. So something about our behavior to match consumer behavior. Let's figure out how to have the conversations at the right time. So how do we know what phase they're in? Great oh, question. We have to ask them. We're going to have to ask them. And I, I'm going to give you some. I'm gonna <laughs> hey, give Mike, some. are you in the aspirational phase of your home search right now? <laughs> That's a good question. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, no, my, no, Agent Mike, I'm in the research phase. I'm actually in the research phase. <laughs> <laughs> right. Actually, ask them like, what your time frame is. Time frame is going to be a big part of that, but I also want to say this. You can almost tell by their method of how they contact you. How they came in. So right. let, me, let me explain that. I'm a, I'm a buyer and I want to see a house. What am I told right now in the market? The last many years. If you're going to buy a house, you have to act fast, right? A buyer emails me a question. Is that a high sense of urgency? No. A buyer texts me something. Is that a higher level of urgency? Yes. A buyer picks a phone up and calls me. Is that a more transactional buyer? Yes. Okay, this is when you also look at your, your lead source. We've got to start thinking a top of funnel activity. Okay. How people enter those funnels. When they're calling on a specific property and they pick the phone up, is that a transactional buyer? Mm -hmm. Hence, it's a different task they're trying to accomplish. Hence, it's a different conversation you need to fit and have the right conversation at the right time, right? By the way, I hate PowerPoints. I never follow them. I'm way off script all the time, so we're not even gonna do that right now. Hope you guys are okay with that. All right, so that being said, right conversation, right time, sense of urgency. This is where I want to go into the framework of the call. So I'm going to have Dan lead this off. <laughs> right after it goes down. Yeah, that no, was, that's why I did that. Yeah. That was the one PowerPoint we're going to yeah. right here and right. let's do that one. Right, I watched you turn it off so I can make you turn it back on. All right. So I want to go into the framework of the call. As we do that, I want to ask you a couple other questions. Consumer behavior matching up with agent behavior. What do you think the consumer experiences when they're becoming transactional and they want to get a hold of somebody? They want to accomplish a task. They want to get access to their home. What's their experience working on in, with our industry right now? Would you say it's filled with friction? It's completely smooth. Friction. 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 Yeah, it's hard. Do you know the average home buyer reaches out to an agent three times before they get a response? How do I know that? Because NAR tracks it. I asked for help three times before someone said I can help you. Would it surprise you that the average home buyer that inquires on an online lead, 47% of the time gets no response at all? How much percent? 47% get no response at all. How do I know? Because the portals track that, Zillow tracks that. Okay, 47% of the time. Who's ever taken an Uber? If 47% of the time Uber did not show up, how many times would you call Uber? <laughs> you know, Amazon only delivers half my stuff. Amazon delivers 47% of the time, or 53% of the time. How, how many times are you going back to Amazon? So, I'm trying to make this relevant for you guys, right? You guys remember this company? It was such a cool company. When I say was, here's why. Because it was called Blockbuster. It was a great company, right? You go there, you pick up a movie, you bring it back. Was there friction in that? You had to go pick it up. Bring it back. Do you guys remember the days? Who was old enough to remember when we actually had to rewind the VHSs? Is right? yeah. that not a pain? Oh, I used to love hearing, oh, it's going faster, it's slowing oh, down, it's yeah. getting close oh, to the yeah. end, it's slowing <laughs> down. <laughs> right? It, it sounds like a Mitsubishi. <laughs> <laughs> so, the point I'm making is 
consumer behavior. They haven't stopped watching movies. They haven't stopped watching television. But the way they do it is changing. Their expectation of how we deliver that product is changing. And yet we're not adapting, not fast enough. That's why referral business is going down. That's why repeat business is going down. Having the right conversations at the right time with the right intent is extremely important. Now we can talk about that all day long. Since we have a shortage of time, I want to focus mostly on transactional buyers. Why transactional buyers? Because 68% on average of buyers are gonna work with the first person to have a meaningful conversation. Meaningful, meaningful. Okay, you got to find out what meaningful is, and we're gonna to get to how do you know that you've had a meaningful conversation, but it's meaningful. So once they have a meaningful conversation, the conversion gets very easy. Cake. Now, up oh, yep. See, that's why I hate PowerPoints. Thanks, Grace. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Definitely your fault. Hashtag blame Grace. <laughs> oh, and now you just yeah, he's killing it all. I just all right. killed it all. <laughs> ah, we'll get it back up in a minute. So, <laughs> Grace, everybody. <laughs> Are you going to do a structure of a call? Yeah, we'll do a structure of a call. So what we want to talk about now is when you have that first conversation, when somebody actually wants to speak to you and they want to become transactional, and what do we, again, what do they want at that point? They want access and information. That's a task we're trying to accomplish. All right, so we're going to get here. It's page 247. It's the graphic right at the bottom here, right? And drop all of the stuff, right? Don't worry. I'm sure you won an award somewhere along the line. Here we go. All right. There it is. Oh, we got it. There it is. All right. Okay. This is the framework of a call. Right now, this is the call when someone's raising their hand. They took action. This is the transactional phase. This is your your portal lead, Zillow, RDC, sign calls. sign calls, and actually, this can be even adopted open house. Okay. Okay. So now, it, I'll sh show of hands, in all honesty, who has ever struggled at that moment of truth when somebody raised their hand? You don't know who they are. You have an option, an opportunity to convert to get a new buyer. Who struggled and fumbled their, their way through that and lost opportunity? Yeah. We've all done it, right? Good, because that's that's we all have done it. Ron does it all the time, pretty much every time. <laughs> Ron but, just does it. <laughs> yeah. But we're going to talk about how to really maximize that. Because if you maximize this conversation piece, your conversion is going to go up. This is how we're closing portal leads at ten percent right now. Online portal leads at ten percent. It's a good number, right? Okay. So this is a diagram. It's in timeline zone, right? In the timeline of a call. All right, we're gonna walk through it, but let's talk about what's going on. Right away, you're calling them, right? It's the intro phase. What do you have to overcome right away? The wall. The wall. Yeah, but prove to me that red buttoning you was not a mistake, or was missing, or green buttoning you was not a mistake. That I should have red buttoned your phone, right? I should have denied the call. So and here's the thing, guys. They want information about a, pro about a property. They're not looking for an agent. Get that out of your head. Yeah. You're a means to an end. Exactly. You're a necessary evil. Their task isn't to talk to you, their task is to get access and information on that property. They have to deal with you. So the way that you have your first, like it's speed dating for conversion. That first intro, that first 10 seconds, I don't even have to, <laughs> I don't even have to explain what he just did there, right? <laughs> but no, anyway, the idea is, think about this. You've got 10 seconds to make a first impression. Just like yeah. that. So this is a framework. The we have two pieces in this framework of a discussion where he gets close to being a script. Use the word script, remember, square peg, round hole, right? You need to make the lead feel like you are there for them. Objective number one of this call is obviously at the end of it, you wanna book the appointment, right? Who's ever gotten a lead and you're driving in your car, you're somewhere else and you have to figure out, crap, I don't have it on the MLS, I can't pull this information up, da 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 Guess what? I don't need any of that to go through this, yeah. okay? In fact, I don't even wanna talk about the dang house. By the way, how many people do you think are really gonna buy the house you're calling in on? All of them. No, wrong. Never, it's like Never. less than 5%. We don't care about the house, guys. They care about the house. We don't care about the house. We care about how do we move them into our lead funnel and keep them there. So, so thank you, bud. Yeah, I just, want, I just want to touch on this point because I don't want to forget where uh, this is important, I think. So on that intro phase, we call it the intro phase. There's a few things that need to happen in the intro phase. First we thing have, you need to accomplish. We'll get to it. We have to do the intro, but okay. Book the appointment is what you want to do, and just put in your own minds, you don't want to talk about the house. You're not here to talk about the house. So if, if 
you've heard before, whatever. Oh, hey, yeah, one, two, three, four Street. It's a great three bedroom, two bath home located on whatever street, you know, Sports Street, whatever. We have great lake views, great ocean views, whatever. You're just vomiting information on them that they already saw, by the way. Okay? So, do you guys catch that? Most of the information that you're going to give them, they already know. Why? Because right. they saw it online. Okay? It's not relevant to them. So, you want to don't talk about the house. Get off of the property and talk about them. That's how this is will get you how to do that. All right? The topic of discussion is them. The objective of the conversation is to book the appointment. Okay? And by the way, can an appointment be something other than a showing? Yes. 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 68% yeah. of buyers are going to work with the first person they have a what? Meaningful, meaningful conversation. That doesn't have to happen inside of a home, by the way. So understand that. All right. So our intro phase, they're answering a call that they may or may not have been expecting was coming, and you have to get real, over all their objections real quick to stay on the call. Right here and at this point over here are the two close points that have a script. Otherwise, everything you do is going to be reacting off of what they say or what they speak. But anyway, step number one, and if you are newer to this framework, this is actually going to be the hardest piece. If I were to call Grace and she actually picks up. Well, if she didn't have caller ID, she might. <laughs> all right you know hey hey Dan here hey Grace it's Dan first thing everyone does in all your normal day life is to introduce what yourself right so think about it. who does this hi this is so-and-so with XYZ Realty is that your opening line who does that right so for those for those that do that I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you why you don't want to do that we're about to tell you we're about to tell you why you don't want to do that now. Okay, so you introduce step one, and it's on here in this framework. Step one is introduce the property first. What's happening here psychologically? Okay? Hey, this and how it sounds like this. This is a courtesy call following up to an inquiry on 1234 Street. Pause. Pause. This is a courtesy call, and actually it's written in the diagram. This is a courtesy call following up to your inquiry. Actually, we're gonna cause that. I said your inquiry. Can that get better? Don't answer Mike. What's wrong with the your? I gave you a hint. There's something wrong with the your. You don't know what's there. There it is. There it is. Right? Okay, so we have all these caller ID caption pieces, right? I can tell you right now that my father will call, if he were to call in on a lead capture system, he's on my family plan. My name is what the caller ID system is going to capture because it's my cell phone bill. Right? So, so, so you, you could have called his number, it has my name, and my father's going to pick up and go, oh, no, I didn't make an inquiry. So I made that mistake exactly two times, and it cost me money both times. I had a conversation that went like this. Hey, you called on XYZ Main Street. And they said, no, I didn't. Yeah, you did. I'm just returning, I'm like hitting return call. <laughs> you did too. I did not. Well, you're lying because I'm looking at my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> lie! <laughs> yeah, right. And, and you think I would have learned the first time. That would have been what normal people do. But no, I doubled down on it the next time it happened because I wanted to win that argument. That guy was wrong. It was him. Yes. So never do that. Don't do what I did. Right? All right, so right off the bat, this is what gets hard from our behavior standpoint is we're so used to introducing yourself first. It's not happening. The first thing you do is introduce the property. Now, this happens in an open house. Guess what? You know what property they're talking about. Why? Because they stepped into it. <laughs> right? You're standing there. Portal lead, any notification you get, it's 1234 Street. You know the property. Okay? So again, hi, this is a courtesy call following up to an inquiry. This whole thing is a chess game to keep the conversation going. But do you guys see the what's going on psychologically? I'm not, I'm not a realtor calling you. I'm not just a, an agent calling you, bugging you. I'm following up and I'm responding to an inquiry. Your action triggered my response. <laughs> Something you did is causing me to call. I'm not just button mashing. Right? So following up to an inquiry on 1234 Street. We've got that covered. It's an inquiry that allows me flexibility to answer this next question. This is the closest thing we have a script. Step two. Confirm you have the right person. Hey, this is a courtesy call following up to inquiry on 1234 Street. Did I get the right person? Okay. Yes, now, that's me. Usually you don't want yes or no questions, correct? Right? right? Because, uh, no, boom, the conversation's done. But the way this is set up, you now have a follow up no matter what the answer is. Right? Hey, this is a courtesy call following up to inquiry on 1234 Street. Did I get the right person? Nope. No, great. Okay, so hey, someone reached out. Who might that have been? Uh, maybe my wife. Right. Is there anybody else in the household that may have called in this property? Right? I'm because again, something triggered me to respond and I want to make sure I'm helping out, right? So you set this up, you keep the chess game going, allows me an easy conversation. Say, oh great, fantastic. Who would have uh, likely made the call? 
want to make sure I'm helping. I'm here to help. Okay. Now, did I get the right person? He says yes. Mike says yes. I say whatever it is. Great. Now here's your introductions. So if you watch that, <laughs> your normal behavior is, hey, what's up, Mike? Hey, Dan, or whatever. To move your introductions to step three is actually takes practice. You are not inclined to do that. Okay? Your normal behavior is not to put your name third. Now you're gonna put your name third. Hey, did you get the right person? Yes, I did. Hey, great. This is Dan with uh, XYZ Realty. Now you may already know their name from the lead source, right? Do you wanna give them that big brother's watching creepy feel on them? Mm -hmm. No, great, so who am I speaking with? And you go from there, okay? Now, uh, we'll, we'll amp this up a bit, it's not written here, you know their name. What are you going to make sure to use the rest of the conversation? Their name. Right? Uh, Jesse's of course be proud, neuro linguistic <coughs> program right there, right? You start using their name, right? Okay. Is it harder to say no to a person? Or just somebody at the other end of the phone, right? Once they become a, once once you treat them as a person, once you start building rapport, it gets harder for them to say no. It's just how it works, right? Going off of that, I just have a question if you guys have ever tried anything other than just a working party, because in our within our team we've struggled trying to find a different word for that because it doesn't sound like they're. Um, a question, use yeah. question, hey, right. a question or a, a, a reach out. Yeah. yeah. Because again, that this is a portal lead which is what we're bracing this framework on, they hit a button. What was the consumer behavior? They hit a button that says, and oftentimes you get a one sentence quote that says, I'd like more information on 124th Street. So it's your question, your inquiry, your, and actually not yours, an inquiry, a question, a whatever, right? Request. Oh, a request. Could be anything. So yes, you can move anywhere in that, right? So it's that's the same, what do you want? Right? <laughs> okay, so look at that. How long did that take? If we role play this out, you want me to be the lead or you want me to lead? I'll do it. Okay. So, how long did you, how long do you guys think this will take, by the way? Five minutes. Right. So, so go ring. Ring ring. Hello. Hi. I'm responding to an inquiry on XYZ Main Street. Do I have the right person? Yeah, that was me. Great. My name is Mike. Who am I speaking to? My name is Dan. Awesome. Eight seconds. Eight seconds. You have now overcome a whole boatload of psychological barriers, and it took eight seconds. Right. So there's the end of anything we have a script. Now you're in this transition point. Okay? Now at this point, you are entering the rapport or discovery phase. Now we're going to get to know about the lead. I don't care about the house. I'm going to use the house as a tool, but I don't care about the house you're calling it. You get really good at this. You can be driving. You can be at the mall. You can be anywhere that's not on your computer in the MLS, and you can convert that lead, get it booked, and roll. Right? Okay? Now, first meaningful conversation. We have to get into a meaningful conversation which means we're providing value. Would you agree with that? Yes. 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 Okay. And feel free to ask questions and interact, guys. All right. So this transition dot, this transition question, there's actually two things we call, and back in our brokerage, we call the golden coin and two sides. There's two questions you want to make sure you can answer both sides. And then there's a third question that I call the ace in the hole. All right. We'll get through those in a second. You want to open with, great. You just did an introduction. My name is Mike. Right where? Great. How can I help? Now, one thing I'm going to say, and we've done this. We have tested this. We have tested this with agent after agent. We have called like we're buyers just to see what experience that a consumer would get talking to you guys. Over and over and over again, we left that conversation saying, "I would never work with so and so. I would never ever want to work with that agent I just talked to." What we've scripted here is to make sure that when you have those conversations that you're not doing the same thing everybody else is doing. So these little differences, even though they seem minor, are absolutely huge for your conversion. Great, yeah, how can I help? <coughs> and at this point, I have no idea what this lead's gonna say anymore. So is it possible for me to have a script? No, I could try one, but if you tell me one comment and I ask a question that's question number six of my script, that didn't have anything to do with what you just said. <coughs> What's the experience I just gave them? I didn't put more friction in this relationship, didn't I? I want to take friction out. It makes it sound like you're not listening. Exactly. So this entire phase right here, answer a question with a question from here on out. So I want to, I want to make this point. When we did those, <coughs> those test group calls, over and over what we found again is agents would just read down a list of features about a property. So. Hey, great property, beautiful views, three bedrooms, two baths, X price, great place, do you want to see it? Every single time, that's what we got. 
And you know, you know what it was? It left us with the with the impression like I would never want to work with this person. They didn't ask one question about me. Other than, what do you think it was? The one question that agents ask every time. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Please is. prove to me you are worth my time. Yeah. <laughs> I'm all about you as long as you're worth my time. Yeah. Are you wasting uh, my time? That's all they're hearing. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait, Mike, does that mean you book appointments if you don't have to pre-approve enough? You know, I'm gonna tell you what right now. If I asked that question in this room right now and you were totally honest, I know there'd be hands going up. Will you meet a buyer if they don't have mortgage approval? Yes. Yeah. Every time. Every time. Thank you. Every room there's gonna be my kind of 50-50 in that. The next time that next year, if we saw you all here, I'm hoping when we ask that question it'd be one hundred percent. Because guess what? If they're not ready yet and I still work with them, I'm, something tells me I need groceries next June. <laughs> I, I don't know. My waistline tends to tell me I don't miss too many of those, so <laughs> that's fine. Right? I'll take the deal that's going to close in June. We'll nurture it. That's fine. I become the resource. That's great. Anyway, so the pattern. Answer the, you're going to answer whatever question they have. You have to acknowledge it, right? Peel with it and keep asking a question. So here's something I want you guys to write down. Ooh, your, notes. Your, I like notes. Your key to success. Ooh, key. I must be an asterisk note. This is an asterisk note. <laughs> Super deep. Ooh, the profundity. I, I doubt it. Ask, Whoa, where'd that word come from? Ask. Ready for this? Mm -hmm. Ask really good questions. Mm -hmm. It sounds so easy, and yet we struggle to do it. Ask really good questions. This is called the discovery slash report phase. Discovery. What do we need to learn about that buyer? If we're going to work with them, we're going to convert them off that house and convert them into our, our funnels. We're going to keep them there. What do we need to know about that buyer? Why don't they why? Yeah, as much as we can. As much as we can. Their motivation, their time frame, and here's another one: their misconceptions. Ooh. You need to figure out what their misconceptions are. Okay, that's part of the asterisk, guys. Did you catch that? If you find out their misconceptions are, what can you then do? Right? You're now a consultant. You're a guide. You're an advocate. Oh, wait. Is that a meaningful conversation? Keep, yes. What kind of questions are those? Well, okay, well, we're, we're, we're going to get through those. But I want, I want one more asterisk for you guys. Can you guys give me one more asterisk? So ask really good questions, but and if we, we asterisk everything, then the asterisk really doesn't do it. Yeah, no, that <laughs> loses value. It's all important. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> so asterisks, really good questions, and then the next one is asterisks, solve their problems. Find their because. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have a why, use your because. How's yeah. that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Did you guys catch that though? Yes. Solve their problems. That's what the buyers today are looking for. When you talk about consumer behavior, guess what guys? They don't need you to find them a house. That's not what they need you for anymore. They can do that on their own. In fact, they're actually don't even starting to not even need you to open the door. Pretty much. They're looking for a higher level consultant, an advocate, a guide, somebody that knows more than they do. Do you think that you guys are contacted or consulted to find a house more than the internet? If you do, your ego is bigger than mine. And that's hard to accomplish. Yeah. <laughs> that's asterisable. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> the idea is, is understand what their wants are, what their needs are, and their needs are for you to solve their problems. Okay, so answer a question with a question. So we'll jump into this, how can I help? I'll be the lead. So I, I'm gonna ask Mike, what's the price? Now this is the easiest one for us to illustrate for you in the time we have. It's gonna be any number of questions, okay? But I'm so, simply gonna ask, what's the price? So. Have you ever had a question like that? How can I help you? You respond to their inquiry. You ask the question, how can I help? How can what I help? Need? What's the price of the house? Anybody ever get that question? Yeah. Has anybody ever said the price of the house and just left it at that? Yeah. Okay. What's the problem with that? Thank you. That's it. Yeah. I got what I needed. I just had a question. What's the price? I'm done. Thank you. So, number one, you responded with an answer and you asked no asterisk what? Question. Follow a question, right? No really good questions. Yeah. 10 minutes? All right, we gotta roll. Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, what's the price? Price is, I'm gonna make it up, $350,000. And the follow-up question is? Is that the price range you're looking at? So you acknowledge, he heard the question, he gave me the answer, right? And he's gonna keep me on the phone. Hey, is that the price range you're looking at? If I say nothing, I, I give him permission to hang up. If I ask him a question, he says, no, it's not the price range. It's not the price so range. So if I say, no, it's not my price range. 
Remember, chess playing, great. What's the bold question now? <laughs> what is the price range? Right. What is the price range you're looking at? And I'm going to tell you this. I'll give you another tip. Validate what they say. If they have an objection, validate it. Don't bang your head against the wall. Don't argue with them. Validate it. Hey, no problem. Good deal, Dan. What is your price range? Price range? Uh, you know what? I'm probably going to be in the three. I'm reading the number off. I said 350 before, right? Right. Uh, 300 is my cap. Awesome, Dan. By the way, what led you to that price? How'd you get there? Right now, what well, we're gonna find out? Misconception. Do people know what they're approved for because of a sale price, cash to close, mortgage payment? Do they understand why they're approved for a certain amount if they're approved at all? Is it possible they went online and got their approval there and never even talked to a lender? Okay. We want to solve their what? Problem. We, we want to get into their misconception, solve their problem. So we need to ask really good questions. So the question was, what led you to that price? You know what? I was on. I'm making an example. Online calculator. I just punched it in. That's what I want to pay. <clears throat> Great. So he was an online calculator, punched in some numbers, and told them that that was the, the house he could afford was three hundred thousand. Can I get into how mortgage approval works then? With can I get into you know at this point that sure. I can, can I? Right? Can I get into that? Okay. Yeah. So mortgage approval works on what? You're approved for what? A price of a home or, or something different? Alone. You're approved for. Alone amount. Nope. Based on, based on, on payment. Payment. Yeah. You're approved on payment. Is it possible that house at three hundred fifty thousand, based on taxes and interest rate? Is it possible that would be my strike zone? Is it possible that he might still be approved for that house and doesn't even know it? So you're approved on two things, guys. Two things: payment and cash to close. Those are the two things you're approved on. If I explore that with my buyer at this point. Is there a fact I can solve his problem and get him into that house? Sure. I'm gonna explore that. For sake of time, we won't go deep on that one, but we'll keep rolling. Okay. So it keeps going. Answer question with a question. All right. Now I said there was a coin with two sides. Sure. The next question you want to make sure to get in here. So in this dialogue, we're gonna have to go through the financing conversation. We're gonna stop, right? So let, let's just assume that we went through it. He said, you know what? That makes sense. I still okay. want to go see the house. Fine. Fine. Right. Second golden question. What attracted you to this property? Of all the properties in the world, why this one? What made you pick the phone up or press the button on this one? What attracted you to this property? Here's what you're gonna do with that. Because you are gonna book the appointment. Mindset, right, in state. Yes, I'm gonna book this appointment. Do you show up and just show that one house? No, you're gonna bring five or six others. You're gonna book a whole showing tour. He doesn't know, the lead doesn't know this yet, but you need to know what you're booking. So what attracted you to this property? Uh, so I'm gonna say Mike attracted this property. Uh, it's close to work. I'm short right. commute. Can I, ask, can I ask a lot of really good questions there, right? I can ask all kinds of questions about where he works, how far he lives right now, is he in a rental, does he own, what's his transition plan look like, what's his time frame? In a perfect world, Dan, when would you like to be in your new home? Oh, yesterday, I'm tired of a three hour drive to go three miles. So my, my point is this, ask really good questions. As you do this, you're gonna hit this rule of thumb. What we do is we tend to flip that in this, in this industry. We tend to talk 70% of the time. And we end up dominating the conversation. Much like we're doing. Wait, no. Right. <laughs> you end up dominating the conversation. We want to listen 70% of the time. You're listening. And we want to control the conversation. How do we control the conversation? We ask what? Questions. 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 That's how we control a conversation. We can lead that conversation where we need to go. And buyers aren't just going to tell you their whole life story. You have to pick things out piece by piece by piece and put it together. You do that through questions, not by conversation, not by talking. I'm gonna talk, okay? Now, in this dialogue, it's gonna happen, you're gonna go by feel. There's no way to say the magic point of try to book the appointment, right? It's just not, oh, these words, you have to go by feel. Here's the good news, you get two shots at it. If you miss it the first time, you keep asking questions, you're talking, you, you're gonna get a chance to come back and circle through it again, but if you miss the opportunity to close it, a third, oh, this guy's, I just wanna see the house, right? Remember, task accomplishment. Is the buyer transactional? If their task they want to accomplish is to see the house, great, get them in there. So don't miss it. If they're not transactional, if they're research, <coughs> if you're on the phone with somebody and it's research, if you're trying to book them in that house, they're going to start sweating. Like I don't, I'm not ready yeah. for that. Yeah. So to be fair, right? Yes, we're, but we're transactional, okay? Now, who has heard about the perfect daily schedule throughout Club Wealth Experience so far, right? <laughs> If you're actually What's following that? it, if you're actually following it, you have blocks of time on your calendar as to when you are guiding your showing commitments, right? This is how you control your life, and this is how you, the perfect daily schedule flows into lead conversion. You're gonna get the feel that says, "Hey, do you know what? Now it's time to go." So it's gonna be, "Hey, Mr. Mike, do you know what really sounds like this is a good time? Let's get some eyes on this property to see if it performs for you." 
in person as it does online. Does the only sound? way you're going to know if you like this is if you see it in person. Yeah, does that right? sound good? That's it. You soon will say, yes, yeah, sounds good, right? Great. Sounds good. Fantastic. Okay, will 3 o'clock today or 6 p.m. tomorrow work for you? What did I just do? Put them in your time block. There it is. Right there. So Who's controlling my day then? You are. How many of you have done this? When would you like to see it? Oh. No. Wait, did I? Okay. Oh, hey, would you like to see it? Now I've asked permission. My first was so, does which time works better? I just took control. At this, why is this start? If you take control, you pull this off right, you are now in the driver's seat with this relationship through closing. So here's the thing, guys, another asterisk. Don't ask permission. Do not ask permission. Okay? So is it 2 o'clock or 4 o'clock? Now, anytime you go here, write this down, feature benefit, why are we doing this, it makes sense. Okay? What we're going to do. So first thing you do, menu close. It's going to be 2 or 3 o'clock, fine, I say 3 o'clock. Mike's now going to do one of the next step here. It said invite others. What is that? Anybody read the scenario? Who's ever sold a house to just a nice young individual? You get to the inspection, and here comes dad. Do we know where we're going with this? Right? You know what my favorite one is? Dad shows up. Hey, I'm Dan. His response is, I'm pissed off. That actually happened. That happened to me. That was, hey, hey, I'm Dan. I'm pissed off. Here we go. <laughs> Buckle up. Would you guys like to know how to try to avoid some of that? Okay, so two words that I want you to get really familiar with. Influencers and decision makers. You have both of them. Yeah. Influencers and what? And decision, decision makers. makers. What's the difference? A decision maker may be tied to the transaction. Maybe a spouse maybe that's going to have actual decision making uh, rights on this property. Other than that, you have influencers. Might be dad. Might be a friend. Might be a cousin. Doesn't matter. Could be anybody. But here's how you overcome it. We're going to meet at 6 o'clock. Great, Dan. Is there anybody else that we should extend an invitation to? Extend an invitation to. We want them all coming. Now, at, got first, at yeah. first, right away, right? And stay with us. Now, gentlemen lead converters with a female lead, they're actually going to have a safety question in their heads, right? I don't know you. I'm going to meet some guy at some house. I don't know, whatever, right? You just gave them permission to bring a friend. So that's a small little subtle nuance and, and here's in the that thing. dynamic. Dan drives a white van with no windows, so they Google it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. He needs to make sure somebody else is there. <laughs> All right, so to be fair, long, does my van have windows? They're tinted. Uh, They're tinted. Yeah. Small ones, right? <laughs> tinted. Uh, <laughs> paper license. No doubt. So if you ever show up to appointment with me, here's how it goes. Guess what? I drive a big white van. If you get there and you don't see it, I'm not there yet. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of obvious. Anyway, all right. So you invite others, right? So Mike, you asked me a question. Yes, my, I'm the lead. Yes, I'll bring my wife along. Great. What's your wife's name? Right. Becky. So now I got the wife's name, and I got the influencer slash decision maker there. Right? And that's going in your CRM now. You don't know my wife's name. It's Becky, right? Okay. You're going to line up more properties. This is an important one. This is a super important one. Are they going to buy the house that you're showing them? No. no. The only attachment they have to you right now is this house. The only thing that ties you to them is that house. That doesn't work out. They walk at the door. Chances of them coming back to you are slim. Unless you're really good. But you take you take control of the situation. Thanks, Grace. Appreciate it. Uh, so you take you take control of the situation. I solved it. And you get and you get them off of that house and into houses that you now have selected on their behalf. You're taking what? Control. Yes. Again, right? You're taking control. We're now driving it. All right, so great. Now, in our state, two minutes, all right, so our state, we do this thing real quick. Now, if you do this wrong, this is the next part where we get close to a script. We call it an agency check. I want to make sure, if you're, let's see, if you are under contract with another agent, right? Well, so, since we only have two minutes, we'll kind of roll through this fast. We have to roll through this one part. Yep. I don't want to skip over the lineup of the properties. How do you pitch that to somebody? No, I only want to see that one house. Okay. So it. to maximize your time, Dan, what I'm going to do, not what I want to do, not can I, but what I'm going to do is pick three to four other properties that match your, your criteria. And I'm going to tell him I'm going to do that, but is he still maybe going to not know the benefit of that? Is there a possibility he goes, well, why do I, I don't, I don't want to see those houses. So I'm going to, A, I'm going to maximize your time. If you like the house that we're going into, the subject property, now we have comparables to make sure we're keeping that seller honest. If you don't like the house we go into, now we've got four other ones that you can go see to maximize your time. Either way, it's a win-win. So you open up and the house sings to you, oh, I know you. Let's price check them against the other properties around, see if they're good. If it does, if you walk in, it smells like cat piss. All right, guess what? I got four others, right? Right. Uh, who's ever been punched in the face walking in the front door like that? Oh, yeah. my gosh. All right. Okay, so we got to do an That's agency check. every one of Dan's listens, by the way. So, 
So anyway, the, the idea is you have to get really good at doing two things. This is Save another thing I want to ask you on. This is super important, guys. Don't just give the feature. You have to give the benefit yeah, on the everything benefit. you do. Feature dump. You yeah. have to just stop talking about features. Let's go look at houses. No, I don't want to look at other houses. The only one I'm interested in is this one. It's in the neighborhood I grew up, but I want other ones. Okay. You have to give them the, the benefit. All right, agency check. Now, where now if I'm actually checking to see if you're working with another agent, right? Who is that conversation about right now? What's that question about right now? You. It's about me. So we just spent three minutes, five minutes, making it about them, and I can kill the whole thing if this doesn't go right, correct? Yeah. Right? So hey, Mike, just so you know, I run my business as open, as ethically as possible. I don't want to step on any professional relationship, professional toes. I have to ask this one question. Now, do I want to ask, are you working with? No. Have you signed with? No. Which one's better? Have you, have you signed? signed? Right. Are you working with an agent? Yes, I am. Dead in the water, right? Yeah. Have you signed with another agent? Well, maybe I have. I don't know if I have. I'm working with one, but I haven't signed. That opens up more discussion. Right. Okay. So it's have you? Yes. Uh, just real quick. What about like in my, my uh, market reentry for like nobody actually does like my agent right. agreement at right. all. So would I still say that like have you signed with anybody? Yes, or because in your in their mind, in the buyer's mind, you want them to know they're free to come talk to you. That's yeah. what you're doing is freeing up the buyer to talk to you. And a little bit of NAR ethical stuff. Yeah. <laughs> Small important <laughs> figure there. Yeah. So should we go through this real quick with easy questions just to hear go the whole yes. thing to get yes. to yes. yes. All right. For those that have buyer's agency in other states, here's how we overcome it. How many pages is your buyer agency? One, One page. Three. Okay. No how many pages. Because they may have signed other stuff. They may have signed an agency disclosure or a purchase agreement way back in the day. So you can ask them what you signed, how many pages was it? Yeah, was it one page or a bunch of pages? All right, right. Who's, who's the lead, who's the, who's the agent? Who do you want to be what? He's the lead. Mike's the lead? Yeah. All right, all right. So ring, ring, ring. I'm the lead, I'm calling you. All right, oh, never mind, never mind, go, go ahead. Hey, this is a courtesy call following up to an inquiry on 1234 Street, did I get the right person? Yeah, that was me. Hey, great. Uh, my name's Dan, I'm with Realty Group, and you are? I'm Mike. Hi, Mike, nice to meet you. How can I help? Well, I saw this property online. I just want to make sure it's still available. Yeah, it's still available. Right now, we are taking time. They're pushing us out. Right. Okay. All right. So you see how it just keeps rolling, right? Um, answer question with a question. We got to get moving. All right. They're, we got to get moving. They're, they're, they're telling us we got to go. So did you guys find this helpful? Yeah. 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 Good. And whatever you didn't like, hashtag blame race. Blame race. <laughs>